Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm going to talk a little bit about books that I've recently read. I've got a little uh, cheat sheet and um, sorry for the boring background but I'm trying to get this in before I go to work and this was the best lighting and the least busy background I could come up with here at camp. So the first book I've finished um, since we've last talked is The Life and Time of the Thunderbolt Kid by Bill Bryson. I was listening to this on audiobook. I believe I discussed it a little bit in my last vlog, um, but it is basically Bill Bryson's memoir of growing up in middle America in the 1950s. And it's very nostalgic and very, um, very much about growing up during the Cold War and like, uh, you know, if you find things like what kind of jello salads people were making for potlucks funny, you will find this amusing. I really like Bill Bryson's writing. Um, he has a particular style of grumpy old white man that I uh, find amusing now and again, and I thought it was really fun to listen to on audiobook. I then finished The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, um, which you will have heard me discuss in my Book 2 Prize ranking video, so I'm not going to go on about it here. Um, but needless to say, I really liked that book. I thought that was an excellently done uh, myth retelling and uh, would highly recommend it. The next thing I finished was Ancillary Mercy by Ann Leckie. This is the third book in her uh, Imperial Ratch. Uh, trilogy. I'm not sure that's the right name um, for the trilogy, but it's basically a science fiction trilogy, so I can't really talk about it very much. But the main character is um, an AI named Breck, and in the first book, you know, you learn that she had been the AI um, on a basically a large spaceship which was destroyed, and she's the last piece of that um, AI left in a human body um, and it's all about her trying to right wrongs and um, bring equality to people in this universe and I really loved it. It was excellent. It does neat things with gender um, and really as all good science fiction does brings a lot of uh, social issues in in a fun and interesting way. The next thing I finished again on audiobook, I've been really really clipping through the audiobooks lately. That is the only thing that has saved my reading this month. Um, and so the next one that I finished was another audiobook, and that's Not That, Not that Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham. Um, and Lena Dunham, uh, for those of you who don't know, and I didn't know, I don't really know anything about Lena Dun Dunham other than I knew she was the somehow involved in um, that show Girls. Uh, and it's sort of like I knew she was somehow involved in feminism. <laughs> but other than that, I didn't know anything about her. I found this book at a library used book sale and picked it up. And then I decided to listen to it on audio because it was available to me um, on Scribd. So it's her memoir basically of her late teens, early 20s um, life. And I just found this book really irritating. I found she reads it herself and she does a good job narrating. That's not the problem. It's just very, um, it's all about mostly about like her sexual relationships and her like trying to figure out the meaning of life kind of thing. And it's like you're 20. <laughs> you, know, you need to live a little more before you can figure that one out. Um, but just really a lot of examination of sexual encounters and alcohol and drug use and just I don't know I just found it very um, boring really quite boring and not very I usually like these kind of like I listen to um, Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendricks which is kind of in the same vein right um, about her you know younger years and how she got into show business and this is the same thing for Lena Dunham it's like kind of like her younger years and how she went you know from her childhood into where she is now but Anna Kendrick's memoir was really funny <laughs> and Lena Dunham's is not <laughs> so I think she tries to be funny in places but I didn't like her humor and I thought it wasn't about it, you know it wasn't 
deep on social issues and it wasn't humorous and so then it was just like why do I care about all your sexual encounters like I just don't so can't recommend that one and then yesterday I listened to in one day while driving for different places for work um, how to get filthy rich in rising Asia by uh, Mohsen Hamid and this book another one that I have on my physical TBR but was available to me on audio so I've scooped it up from my library um, and this one is a strange book because the voice, it, it, the conceit of the book is that it's a self-help book, right? Like, you know from the beginning that it's fiction, but the way that it's written is like it's a non-fiction and it's a self-help book. And each chapter has a title that would have to do with, you know, like how you would get rich. Um, so different, uh like a business self-help book would would have um, for a title for chapter headings and then you learn more about um, the main character there's two basically two main characters a young boy uh, growing up in India and um, a young girl growing up in the same neighborhood in India and their paths it's kind of like how their paths keep crossing throughout their lives from when they're teenagers until they're elderly and um, but you're mostly focusing uh, on the boy and the the woman I don't believe is ever named she's called pretty girl um, by the narrator and the narration is done not in first person or third person so <laughs> it's a little odd the voice is a little odd and takes a little bit of getting used to um, but the story itself of a young man's rise um, from extreme poverty into uh, you know and coming from a rural he comes from a rural poverty stricken family they move to the city when he's a young boy and then his rise from basically poverty up through you know uh, as an entrepreneur um, it, it, through the the corrupt system in India um, and it was an interesting story, but the way that it was told was tough. And um, in the end, I really liked it because I liked how it all came together. But I found the uh, the style of it quite off-putting. Um, and so, but the ending kind of saved it for me. <laughs> So I don't know. I'm still thinking about that one. I think it's an interesting story and it's, uh, you know, if you're interested in um, basically a story of a life in India, you know, of a boy growing, uh, what he boy has to do to sort of make it for him, make it financially and be successful. Um, and is that really being successful? Is earning money really success? And that, and the book does, I think, is one of the themes in the book is is financial success really all that you should be striving for in your life so I thought the message was good um, I just the, the format and the style mm, 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 I don't know <laughs> and then I of course finished um, when I was Puerto Rican by Esmeralda Santiago um, which I had been buddy reading with Doris and Alba this is fabulous five star read you know I've been gushing about it every time I've talked about it on this channel uh, a memoir of a young girl growing up in Puerto Rico um, and all that entails um, learned a ton about Puerto Rico from this novel I mean from this memoir excuse me and also from our conversations with Alba um, and am still flabbergasted at how many medical uses to which Vicks Vapor Rub can be put to. <laughs> Read the book, guys. It's real good. And then oh, this book. I want to just hug this book. I love this book so much. This is All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Taves. You guys know that I read Women Talking last year, and it was one of my top reads of last year. And this is equal. Equal. I love this book equally. Maybe not more than women talking, but I love it equally. This is a book about two sisters. One sister, um, Elf, is a famous uh, pianist, and her sister Yoli is um, basically screwing up her life, <laughs> or she feels she's screwing up her life. But she's a novelist, and um, Elf is has suffered. From childhood with mental health issues and um, as the story begins we know that uh, Elf wants to die she wants to 
kill herself. Uh, she doesn't want to live any longer. And um, her sister Yoli does not want to let her go because they have an amazing bond and relationship. And um, Yoli can't imagine life without her sister in it. And so these two sisters had grown up in a Mennonite family. Um, and we learn about uh, how that um, culture uh, shaped who they are as adults and we learn it's just a wonderful family story it's all about um, you know what you do for the people that you love and what you can do for the people that you love and it's a written in a style that's it's funny and poignant and heartbreaking and warm and hopeful it's everything that fiction should be. Miriam Taves is a genius. I am absolutely going to read everything this woman has ever written. Um, and I would highly, highly encourage you to pick this book up. It is triggering uh, if, um, you know, if suicide and that type of a theme is a trigger for you, I would warn you about that. But otherwise, even though this is a book about that topic, it is beautifully written and it is not um, it did not leave me feeling depressed in the end uh, which is amazing it it left me with a warm glow <laughs> um, and just a feeling of like amazement that somebody could take a topic like this and write a book and leave me feeling hopeful at the end um, five star a plus you know, whatever the thing is that gets you to pick that book up, please do pick it up. So that's what I have read. Um, I'm currently I'm between audiobooks because I finished How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia yesterday. So I'll be picking up a new one today and I've got a choice between two. So I don't know which one that's going to be. I'm about 100 pages from finishing These Truths by Jill Lepore, my nonfiction history of the United States. Um, I'm reading a short story a week out of this collection with Sean, the book maniac, and the last two stories we've read have been excellent, so that's going very well. I um, mean, other than that, I think that's it. Oh, Barkskins is still on the go. Um, Natalie and I hopefully can get back into that one now that uh, Reading Rush is done. And uh, that's it, guys. I will talk to you later. That when you walk and come right up to you. Walk you behind. No, Ellie.